Well, hi everybody. This is Paul Fisher from the University of Florida IFAS Extension, and I'm really happy to introduce John Green, who is a senior technical specialist at Blue Lab Corporation. I met John when he was helping to install a PHEC controller uh, in my research greenhouse, and he has a lot of experience and expertise here. And given that we're talking a lot about pH and EC control. I thought, well, we'll get somebody who's got practical experience visiting a lot of growers and seeing the issues that uh, are likely to come up. So welcome, John. Hey, Paul, thank you for having me. All right, well, uh, let's, let's go ahead and get started. And topic of the day is monitoring of hydroponic systems. Okay, thank you very much. Uh, it's a pleasure to be here. I'm going to go ahead and talk about the uh, monitoring of hydroponic systems. Today on the agenda, we're going to talk about the importance of pH and EC management, water management, observing, testing, and controlling, and we'll finish up with pro tips. Pure water or RO distilled water has very little if any ions in it and therefore cannot conduct electricity. When you take the uh, nutrients that we have, nutrients are minerals and minerals are salts. When they are dissolved into water, they become positive and negative ions. We can test the conductivity with the EC meter, which basically is just a low voltage uh, voltmeter that puts out a small amount of electricity. That electricity goes and tries to go into the other side of it and capture it. If there's not enough ions in there, it just dissipates in the water. Once we've added enough, enough nutrients, salts, and it's able to bridge that gap and go back, it will measure the resistance between the two probes, the two measuring devices on the EC meter. And this will give you a reading. So the, the, the small amount of EC salts that are in there will give you a low reading. As we add more nutrients, more salts, we'll get a higher reading. The higher concentration of salts, the higher the reading, obviously. It will not measure NPK, it's just the amount of salts are in there. So it's very, very important that excessive high levels of salts in the nutrients can induce ion toxicity, osmotic stress, and nutrient imbalance. And obviously a low amount will mean there will just be deficiencies and decreased plant growth. So again, we're adding salts to it. We're, uh, we're, we don't know how much it is. It could all be table salt. We don't know. But if you're doing your, your calculations right and you're measuring your nutrients and you're putting in the right mils per gallon, and you know that you're supposed to come to like 1.2 EC, this EC measurement will give you the precise amount that you have put in there. Okay, I'd like to not talk about pH now, which is potential, potential hydrogen. This is the measurement of acidic or basic. The pH scale runs from zero to 14 with seven being neutral. The lower the number from seven down is more acidic. The higher the number from seven on up is more basic. This is, we've made up this nice nutrient reservoir and we're going to try to get this to the plant now and every plant has a range that it likes to uh, the pH to be in order for it to absorb these nutrients to make them more soluble and available to the plant. So pH is probably one of the many things but a very very important factor in there. It's something that has got to be monitored and checked on a daily basis and also too it's very important that, that the pH measurements are taken at about the same time each day to keep everything the same. So I'd like to get into water management now. We'll go into water quality. Um, a lot of you out there will be using clean water, RO water. Uh, you're going to use some type of a scrubbing agent or a filtration system. But there are a lot of people out there that will not. A lot of people will use tap water, well water, pond water. Uh, so uh, anybody that's using a RO system, they can start from scratch there. But if you're using a city water, I rec highly recommend that you get a water analysis. Have it analyzed by a lab. Poor water quality can cause toxicity and deficiency problems in the beginning or later in production. Naturally, water can obtain salts like calcium, magnesium, bicarbonates, chloride, sulfates. These salts can affect the EC as well. Aeration of the water is very important because the roots of the plants cannot get oxygen from photosynthesis and rely on absorbing oxygen from the environment around them to survive. Without aeration, the roots will die. Another reason is that oxygen around the root mass is important, is that the beneficial microorganisms rely on oxygen. Rich environments to live and produce where the pathogenic organisms do not survive well, but will thrive in an oxygen depleted environment. This is achieved via pumps, air stones, or diffusers. 
for most hydroponic systems, the ideal nutrient solution falls between 65 and 72 degrees Fahrenheit. Lower temps, slower, great, slower growth rates, and higher temps will not be available to hold enough dissolved oxygen. This can be achieved with a chiller or a heater, depending on your grow. Plants tend to drink more water than nutrients, thus the EC will rise if you're recirculating. If this is the case, then you will have to dilute that, the water, and add to, to the EC to top up or top off to bring your EC down and to regain more water in your res. This is just a layout of meters. I just put this in here just to show that if we can start with litmus paper, we can start with drops. Uh, a lot of the hobbyists, a lot of the big growers that I know today started this route. Slowly worked their way up into a, a small uh, handheld pen, which a lot of the big growers still use today to carry it with them. It's mobile and they can take it with them. You can get into a multimeter that does EC as well as pH, and you can go into what we call monitoring systems. A monitoring system would be something that does not do any dosing, but it's there, it's 24 seven, it's monitoring. There's many, many different types of auto dosing. There's lineal, like a dosatron, which goes on the, the rate of flow of water. This is typically a, a system where it runs, even out in the field, will run straight from a, maybe a wellhead, and you'll have two or three pumps, four, as many as they want. Typically, the, the ag guys will only run two or three, maybe a, a, a B, and a, and a pH, and maybe some type of a, a cleaning agent. But uh, typically, these are run non-electric. They're run through a uh, rate of flow of water. They'll pick up the nutrients, as you can see in the one uh, picture there, the pick the nutrients. You'll be able to dial in how many mils per gallon you want, and depending on how fast it goes, uh, that's how much it'll pull in. So it, again, you have to monitor before to see what's coming in. You monitor at the end to make sure the EC is right. Pros and cons, pros of this would be the fact that it's not electric, it's running with the water flow. Cons would be that salt builds up salt coagulates. Water evaporates, salt doesn't, salt will, will coagulate on these. And after a while, they need to be rebuilt, cleaned out. And that's just the nature of the beast. Just about all of these pumps do. We have different types of other types of pumps. We've got um, magnetic pumps, centrifugal pumps, diaphragm pumps. Uh, we have peristaltic pumps. The peristaltic pumps in this photo here are the, the beauty about these, they, uh, the, the nutrients never touch any part of the pump itself. The pump will go through what's called a cassette. The cassette is a small surgical tube there that goes into a little round gear. The gear has wheels on it. As these wheels spin, they create contact with the outside of the cassette and they'll pull in and almost like a vacuum. Once they pull it in, it creates a vacuum. The beauty of these is that they're very precise. No nutrients touch it. And the cassette, unlike having to rebuild a pump, the cassette can be easily be taken out once a year, take a 90 degree turn, pop the cassette off, put the new cassette back on, 90 degrees down, turn the screws on and you're up and going. These are also calibratable, which is a very nice system too, because as we know, different, vis different nutrients will have different viscosities. So if we're running these pumps at so many mils each, we wanna make sure they're all pumping the exact same. Uh, another thing about auto dosing is it saves a significant amount of labor and time. It protects against crop shock and events. Uh, this works both for large and small systems. I've got guys that go from, believe it or not, 25, 50 gallon system with a fully automated up to, I'm working with some guys in Hawaii right now that have a 10,000 gallon system. Automated systems work for both small and large systems. In fact, small systems can benefit greatly due to the fact that their nutrient levels usually fluctuate much more widely than a larger system. So in other words, you're gonna see smaller moves in maybe a thousand gallon system as you opposed to a 50 or hundred gallon system. Kind of a recap of what we talked about earlier. Uh, one would be know your water. Again, we talked about, again, if you are using well water, tap water, uh, uh, water uh, other than RO, you need to know what's in there. It's a good idea to get a, an analysis, even if it costs you a few bucks, find out what's going into that. Uh, I have uh, clients I work with in, in Oklahoma where they have extremely high calcium in their water. They don't have to add calcium. And in fact, if they do add calcium, they're at such a high level that this is way too much in their system. Balance the nutrients. Make sure you use an EC meter to make sure that you've got balanced nutrients in there. And again, if you're using, starting with RO water, 
It's going to be easy to put the right amounts in. If you're not using a, a, a clean water, this is going to give you a good tip of how much you can put in there. Optimum pH, again, the pH is the plant's avail availability to get to these nutrients, the solubility, the mobility of these nutrients to the root system. Plentiful oxygen available, whether it's going to be through a uh, air stone or diffuser system, or if it's going to be running through an NFT where it's picking up, it's picking up oxygenation on the way. I put out uh, optimum light, temp, humidity, air circulation, CO2. These are all factors that go hand in hand with the, uh, with the five tips here. I put a couple of extra ones in here. I wrote this one as a C2H, clean, calibrate, hydrate. Again, we're talking about some sophisticated equipment. Some of it's expensive, but these the equipment that we use is only going to be as good as how clean these tips of these probes are. I mean, you'd be surprised how many guys buy the equipment. They don't take care of it. They throw it in their reservoir, maybe, maybe throw it on the bottom of the tank where we do not want it to be with all the stuff that precipitates or falls out. They may have it over an air stone where it's not going to get an accurate pH reading. It's very important that they take care of this equipment. They calibrate it when necessary. They treat it. Uh, respectfully clean it, hydrate it with potassium chloride, and keep it working. If you take care of it, it's going to take care of you. Because the success of a grow is only as successful as the team that's managing it. Another point that you brought up here, John, was around uh, doesn't matter if you've got a manual system or a, an automated monitoring or control system, all of that equipment requires some level of calibration and maintenance. It's, it's not like you can buy a car and never change the oil. So reading the manual and doing uh, some preventative uh, monitoring and maintenance, I think is also a key for success, right? That's exactly right. Everybody wants automated and the more I see it, the, everybody wants some API system where they can have one system. They can read and have a graph and sit behind the desk and see the CO2 and see the, the light and see whatever. There's always going to be a human element in there. And again, you could have the best system out. I don't care what it could, it could be a hundred thousand dollar dosing system. It could go down to a $3,000 dosing system. It's only going to be as good as those two, probes that are reading or how many probes it's only going to be as good as what the information they provide to the brain to the, the, the system itself you've always got to take care of it you've got to clean it calibrate and hydrate that's just part of it but that's if you do that properly and that that end of it if your end of it on the automation side is, is good the light guy and the other guys ac and all them can do their job as well but yes you're right you have to take care of your, your equipment and then the very last point, I'm going to give a plug for our online education series here is uh, you're only going to be as good as the uh, team that is managing your operation. And so I think you provided us with a lot of great information today. And I hope that some of our viewers will consider taking some of our online courses as well. So thanks a lot, John. Really appreciate it. And uh, Thank you, appreciate Paul. you sharing your expertise. Thank you, Paul. It was a pleasure.